Welcome to Inside Guelph, where our goal is to provide you the best real estate analysis of the Guelph real estate market while connecting you to local leaders and businesses that make up our community. Right now, you're watching the Local Leaders segment, where we invite a local leader from our community to share their expertise. Today, we have Angela Bell, our go-to mortgage agent for our clients, and she's actually going to answer our, most, our clients' most frequently asked questions about the mortgage process. And this video is brought to you by none other than us, the Zon Team Real Estate Advisors, the only real estate company that's gonna guarantee you a five-star real estate experience or we pay you the commission back. If you wanna learn more about how that works, check out zonteam.ca. And one last thing, if you like content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and then you'll be notified next time we release content like this. All right, without further ado, let's begin the interview. Hey Angela, thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy day to join us on Inside Guelph today. I'd love to start off by asking you some icebreaker questions so our audience can uh, get to know you a little better. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, let's do it. Uh, what was your first job? Uh, conference cups, sorting cups. Sorting cups. Yeah, paper cup manufacturer. That's really cool. There you go. Yeah. That's, that's the first time I've ever heard that one. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite golf patio? If you uh, had the fat duck. Fat duck. All right, cool. Um, ping pong or foosball? Foosball. Foosball. Good choice. Mm -hmm. Good choice. All right. Uh, let's dive into the questions. So, um, you know, our, our clients have uh, asked you a lot of questions. You know, you're our go-to mortgage broker and uh, and I know you probably get a lot of the same questions. So um, I, I'm going to run into some of those and uh, and I'd love to hear your, your insights so everyone can get a little bit more educated on the mortgage process, especially as it relates to working with you. Sound good? Sounds great. All right. So some of the questions we get um, a lot are, you know, how much do I qualify for? What are the best rates I can get? And what's the difference between a fixed and a variable rate mortgage? Uh, so can you take us through the process um, of, of, of what that looks like and like how, do you, how you answer those questions? Yeah, sure can. Um, so to start with, how much do I qualify for? That is a very uh, frequent question. And the answer to that is always, it depends. Um, because it does depend on a number of different things. Uh, firstly is uh, how much income does a client have that is consistent and can be verified? Um, secondly is their credit rating. How good is it? Um, you know, what does their last six years look like? Third is how much other debt they have. Um, so things like car payments, credit cards, lines of credit, what are they making payments on monthly? Um, and finally is how much of a down payment do they have? So for example, um, if we get a borrower or borrowers that comes in with about hundred thousand dollars in income, they have really great credit, 20% down payment and no other debts. Um, they're going to qualify for a mortgage of around $510,000 with a purchase pr price of about six forty, dollars let's say. If that same group comes in and they have $600, $600 a month in debt payments that have to be made on, say, a car and a credit card, their mortgage amount is going to drop to $475,000. So that's how it all kind of works together. That's why there's no one answer when people are like, I make $75,000, how much can I get? It's like, well, let's look at some other things. For sure, just like any situation, we always need to understand the client's goals before we can really give them good advice, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, some questions that, uh, that that sparked my that sparked in my mind here is uh, credit rating. You said you know good credit, bad credit. So um, you know there's I know there's different lenders out there. There's A, B, and private lenders and C lenders potentially. I'm not sure what how many letters of the alphabet it goes down to. Yeah. But um, you know what would be an A lender looking for in terms of credit score, or does it vary? Um, above six eighty. Okay. Uh, it can vary depending on the lender, whether they want all borrowers above 680, whether just the primary borrower has to be above 680. But typically we say once you hit 680, that's when you're going to get the better interest rates, um, the better terms in the mortgage. Okay, cool. So that should be a goal for everybody to have a credit score of 680. That way they can get the absolute cheapest rates and the best products out there. Really cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Um, so the other question that uh, people always ask is what the best, what's the best rate I can get? But like you said, that kind of ties into the uh, credit rating and their down payment. Um, so the third one is the difference between a fixed and variable mortgage. And like you already said, you know, you really need to understand the client's goals. Mm -hmm. um, so what are you looking for before you make a recommendation on fixed or variable? Um, so fixed or variable is really a personal preference when it comes to the client, because just if a variable rate makes the most sense to them, but they are not comfortable with risk, um, then we have to look at different things to make the fixed rate work best for them. Um, I mean, realistically, if everybody was comfortable with it, a variable rate is best for everybody, because um, if you look at 
um, historically, like the statistics say that people in a variable rate over the lifetime of the mortgage, so the entire 25 or 30 year amortization of the mortgage, um, in a variable rate, you are going to pay less total interest overall. Even though sometimes it might go higher and sometimes it might go lower, it's going to average to your benefit to be in a variable rate. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that with a variable rate mortgage, um, you know what your prepayment penalty is going to be. So you know that you are going to pay three months interest penalty if you break the term of your mortgage early. But with a fixed rate, you might get three months or you might get the interest rate differential. Um, and everybody thinks they're going to stay in a mortgage forever. Um, we all think, you know, five years, nothing in my life is going to change. Um, but like statistically, six out of 10 people change the term of their mortgage within 38 months, whether it's because of, um, you know, job changes, family changes, divorce, you know, death or illness, someone loses a job. There's so much that can change in life in a five-year period um, that most people are changing it by 38 months. Yeah, and when you take into consideration, um, you know, like you already said, a variable rate mortgage already is likely going to be less than a fixed rate in terms of the long term. And then if you add on top of the uh, interest rate differential penalty that you can get, um, that's definitely going to be a lot cheaper that way. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've never heard of anyone actually only having to pay three months interest in a fixed product before. So uh, that <laughs> probably happens very rarely or only if, uh, when, when would that happen? Only if interest rates were a lot higher than the current rate, would that be the case or? Um, so if the, yeah, if the rate that the lenders are lending out at now for the term remaining in your mortgage is higher than what you currently are paying, then you will get three months. Right. Um, but there's things that higher. factor into that as well. Like okay. what discount did they give you when you got the original mortgage? Um, Cause they're going to factor that in. So there's a lot going into it and typically um, everybody pays more than three months. Okay, great. And just so everyone understands, you know, um, a, a fixed rate mortgage is something that uh, you're locked into. So the rate never changes. And can you explain uh, to the audience that, you know, what a variable really is like, what does a variable mean and, and what is it? And what determines if it goes up or down? Yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah, with a fixed rate mortgage, obviously you get that interest rate for the term of the mortgage that you've signed up for. Five year fixed, 234, you're getting 234 for five years. With a variable rate, what you're actually locking in is what we call the adjustment factor. So a variable rate is quoted as prime plus or minus some percentage rate. Um, right now we're looking at say prime minus 1%. Um, so prime is what's going to vary. Prime is um, prime is the interest rate that's influenced by the Bank of Canada's overnight rate. Um, and right now it's been sitting at about 245 for the last year, year and a half. Um, prime is what's going to change the adjustment factor. So your minus one that you'd be signing up to right now is what is going to stay consistent. So right now, prime minus one is 145. If interest rates, uh, if prime goes up by a quarter percent, you're at 2.7, your interest rate is gonna go up to 1.7. So that's the part that varies is prime. Great, perfect, thanks for explaining that. Uh, next question I have for you here is, um, uh, for those who don't know, what does it mean to have a co-signer and what is the co-signer's responsibility? Um, okay, so co-signers are good. Um, when someone co-signs onto a loan, they're essentially taking full responsibility for the loan. Um, and in the event that the primary borrower cannot make the payments, the co-signer would make the payments. So when somebody co-signs for a loan, they're applying for the loan along with the primary borrowers. Um, so the reason for adding a co-signer is they bring strength to a mortgage application. So if somebody doesn't have enough income, if their credit's not strong enough, or if their credit's not reliable enough, um, then what they might do is go out and find a co-signer, someone that has more income to add to the application than debt and has a strong credit rating um, to sign up along with them uh, to strengthen the application that's going into a lender. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind with co-signers, they are fully responsible for the mortgage. So in the event that the primary borrower disappears, uh, can't make the payments, the co-signer will be called upon to make the payments and the co-signer does have to go on title to the property. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, if you're co-signing a property, make sure that they understand that uh, they are taking full responsibility for the mortgage if the primary cannot pay, which is which is a big deal. So, um, hopefully, hopefully, everyone that's getting into that situation understands that. Um, 
And then you already answered that second part. How does that help a buyer qualify for a mortgage? And like you just said, it strengthens the application. So they're bringing extra income, um, but potentially if that co-signer is bringing a lot of debt too, that could potentially weaken the application as well, no? Yeah, you wanna make sure that um, you have a strong co-signer if you're bringing somebody on, uh, because yes, their debt can uh, negatively affect the application if it um, offsets the additional income too much. Okay, great. Uh, the next question here, in a scenario where a client owns a home and they want to buy a rental property, what's the best course of action to do that? Um, so there's a couple different things that you can do in that situation. Um, so, I mean, the optimal way is I have a primary residence and I've saved up my down payment for a rental property 20% and I'm going to go buy it, which is not often the case. Um, so if somebody has a lot of equity built up in their primary residence, there's a couple of things that they can do. The first is that they can borrow and actually take that equity out of their primary residence and use that as their down payment for their rental property. Um, and when they, when they do this, um, they do have to disclose on the mortgage application for the purchase of the rental that they have in fact borrowed the down payment and the increased borrowing amount does have to be factored into affordability, but it's like, there's nothing to stop them from doing that other than qualifying. Um, the other option available is depending on the type of lender you're working with, you may be able to have a collateral charge attached to your primary residence so that you can borrow more of the purchase price. Um, this isn't done through A or B lenders, so the cost of borrowing would be higher, but it is an option available if, say, they don't qualify to borrow the money against their primary and borrow the money for their for the rental property. Okay, interesting. Um, and is that is that is that a way to avoid having to put twenty percent down if you don't potentially have twenty percent down and you found a good opportunity, or how? Do, what does that look like? Well, yeah, it's a way of 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 borrowing more than yeah, 80% loan to value be, because what you're doing is you're borrowing 80% of an increased value because you're adding the equity in the primary residence to the equity in the property being purchased and then borrowing 80% of that. So that brings the borrowing amount up. Perfect. And if uh, people have any extra questions, we're going to link your information in this video so people can reach yeah. out to you and ask you because sometimes these kind of questions can uh, need, need a little bit more uh, clarity yeah. and uh, dive a little bit deeper about someone's unique perspective. So we'll make sure that that information is there. If you do have any questions about accumulating a rental property, Angela is a great person to be speaking to as long as well as uh, as well as us as well. Um, so uh, yeah, let's go to the next question. Um, uh, okay. And then, yeah, that's the one I asked. Okay, what's your spawn when someone says to you, uh, you know, why would I take a variable if, if rates could go up in the future? I know you might have touched on it a little bit, but sometimes mm -hmm. people believe that rates are always going to go up, especially at our rock bottom uh, interest rates right now. So in a time like this, when people believe interest rates are only going to go up, um, you know, why, why would someone still want to potentially take a variable? Yeah, no problem. So, um, you know, as, as we mentioned before, um, over the lifetime of a mortgage, while the variable rate might go up right now, historically over the lifetime of the mortgage, people pay less interest in a variable than they do in a fixed rate. So like in, as total interest. So it might look like interest rates are gonna go up right now, right? And they might go up for the next three, five, eight years, but a mortgage has a 25 to 30 year life cycle. So while it might be higher in the short term right now, it also means it's going to be lower in the long term. So thinking of your mortgage as a long term investment, it makes sense to put to, to go with the variable rate just because of the cycles and the fact that everything that goes up is eventually going to come down. Um, and then the other the other side of it is what we we discussed in, is the fact that most people break the term of their mortgage. So having a variable rate, um, while it might go up in the next year or two, could also save you a lot of money in the event that you have to break the term of your mortgage at, say, three years. Um, so it does give you flexibility and over the long run, it does save you interest. Absolutely. There was a scenario not that long ago that, uh, you know, a three month interest penalty would have been about $4,000, but the interest rate differ differential was about $30,000. So just to put that into perspective for people watching, it could be quite drastic, your interest rate uh, differential penalty. So mm -hmm. great. That's all I have for you in terms of questions. Did you have anything that you wanted to add? Um, I guess the only thing I would add is that, um, you know, for anybody thinking about buying a house in the future, it's always really great to speak to a mortgage agent. 
um, when you're getting started as well, uh, just because when you know things up front, so if they know that they need to improve their credit or they need to save more down payment to get the house of their dreams, knowing that up front gives them time to fix it. So it's never too early to talk to someone about the money that you need to borrow. Absolutely. Having a plan is the only way to really do it, right? Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Angela. I appreciate it. And I hope Thank we can you. have you back. All right. Absolutely. Have a great day. You too. Bye.